My name is Jeffrey Kahn, and I'm the host of Digital Oil & Gas, the podcast that looks at the impact of digital technology on the oil and gas industry. If you want to discuss this week's topic further, or just stay in touch, you can always reach me at Jeffrey Kahn on Twitter or at JeffreyCahn.com. This podcast is entitled The Impact of Digital on Oil and Gas Work. We all have an uneasy sense that jobs are changing rapidly thanks to digital, but what will be the future of oil and gas work in an increasingly digital world? Well, after writing some 70 articles about the impact that digital technologies are having on oil and gas, I formed a point of view about the future of work, but a strongly held point of view isn't as convincing as an actual study of the impacts. So, last year, working with some students from the University of Calgary, I set out to study this question. We began with a hypothesis that the oil and gas industry would aim its digital innovation dollars at work that was some combination of extra dangerous, and so elaborate protections are needed to safeguard the humans, high volume routine, or extra costly, perhaps by virtue of its location, or the scarcity of the skills required. And to test the hypothesis, we interviewed 11 oil and gas industry professionals from around the world, and seven university researchers. There's almost no difference in the likely impacts of digital on these three categories of work, but there was considerable differences in where digital innovation had made an impact already. High volume routine work was already receiving high attention and the deepest penetration. There are a number of reasons behind the selection of routine work as the digital target. First, the more hazardous work, or the work that was more costly to do, was typically dependent on investing more capital. But the industry, or at least in Canada, is still very capital constrained, making digital investment there less economic. Second, some work could be impacted by digital, but might be contingent on available infrastructure. And third, digitalizing routine work tended to have the fastest path to value, that is, the returns could be realized within a year. It turns out that there is low value of routine work in virtually all industry sectors, which in turn means that no sector can rest comfortably under the delusion that digital is some passing fad to be ignored. From drones in Amazon's warehouses, to IBM blockchain on shipping containers, to Tesla's self-driving trucks, if a job involves holding a steering wheel, there's a good bet that it won't exist in a few years. Public sector services, like business licensing, taxpayer identity, self-service business models will help reinvent the public administration of societies. And new technologies like nanorobots, doctor-assist artificial intelligence, and 3D printed organs will help deliver improved health outcomes and extend lives. While it was less clear when jobs in these sectors will be impacted, there was no doubt that the impacts would be dramatic and sudden. Transportation and logistics are likely the first to feel change in a big way. In fact, it already is. Two of Canada's oil sands miners have announced automated truck projects. So if all work as we know it is going to be disrupted to one degree or another, then what is to become of the human worker? Or put another way, what human attributes and work skills look like they will be least impacted by digital's march into the work world? Well, here's a starter list of the human attributes that for the moment distinguish us from machines. Number one is leadership. The complexities of decision-making might be assisted by machines, but humans look like they will own the leadership roles over other humans. That doesn't mean all leaders are safe. The shift supervisor over haul truck drivers disappears when the haul trucks no longer have human drivers. Number two is empathy. Being able to connect emotionally with humans under a broad range of settings, think of the act of selling, providing coaching, delivering bad news, and negotiating, looks like a restricted human skill. Third is teamwork. Bringing lots of complex skills together in short bursts to work on complex problems collaboratively will remain with Homo sapiens. At the same time, traditional teamwork in factories is disappearing. Visit a shop floor. There are no humans about because the machines are clumsy and dangerous, and the machines are often caged for our safety. Number four is communications. Basic communications are now being put together by digital solutions, but the ability to tell compelling stories is inherently human. Next is customer insight. Machines are not yet able to draw deep conclusions about human motivations and personal drivers. Algorithms may be predictive, but if they were as good as humans, they would have predicted the backlash and considered the ethics of the analysis. And here I'm thinking about the Cambridge Analytica situation with Facebook. Next is innovation and creativity. There are still many fields where humans are the supreme innovator, able to imagine new solutions to problems, invent new devices, and create new art. 
Machines and algorithms have shown remarkable ability to improve on human design, but not yet to create the initial breakthrough. And finally, critical thinking and judgment. Digital systems may be able to pull together the data and increasing levels of detail and sophistication to automate driving, but the decisions to start a business, to launch a product, and to close a factory will always take humans to weigh the considerations and the trade-offs. Machines are able to learn and so must humans. One of the biggest digital innovations involves machine learning. At a simple level, machines learn through repetition. Group a thousand different pictures of forks into a category called fork, and it's a pretty good bet that a machine with an optical lens or scanner will be able to recognize a fork by quickly comparing an unfamiliar picture of a fork to the thousand other pictures of forks. Machines are phenomenal learners. They have infinite capacity to learn. They don't take breaks, and they're programmed to stay on task forever or throughout their lives. Therefore, they have what we might call high levels of self-motivation. Machines are connected to one another so that lessons can be learned instantly and shared to other like machines, the so-called fleet learning phenomenon. We connect them back to their makers to keep them technically current, and we protect them with cyber firewalls and hide them in data centers. For humans to maintain their place in the future of work, we must also adopt these same attributes. We must maintain our own curiosity and remain lifelong learners. We need to bolster our self-motivation to this task because it's in our self-interest and no one else's. We need to maintain our connection to the learning institutions in our lives, such as our universities, clubs, and communities where learning takes place. We need to create the kinds of support we need for this task, sabbaticals, work tours, apprenticeships, job swaps throughout the work world. To summarize, I believe that all work is going to change, that key human skills and attributes will be permanently differentiating, but machines are made to learn, and so we must up our learning game. You can find a copy of my presentation on slideshare.net, but if your employer is one of those that blocks access to learning, you can just email me for a copy. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe to the show. You can find more episodes of Digital Oil & Gas on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, and Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts, or just visit jeffreycan.com slash podcast for more. If you have a minute, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts and tell other people about the show. This helps them discover more great content. Later this year, Jeffrey will publish a book on the impacts of digital innovation on the oil and gas industry. You can keep track of this new project by following Jeffrey on LinkedIn. Thanks for listening to this episode of Digital Oil and Gas. The podcast returns next Wednesday, so tune in then.